Regularly scheduled programs will not be seen so that we may bring you this special presentation from WVEC-TV. A Navy Christmas, 10 years. It's always hard. Separation is uh, as difficult as it's ever been uh, for us. It's rough. It's miserable, you know. I just cry and, and just pray and ask God to give me strength. You can do it one time or a hundred times, so it's still hard. This is one of the hardest things that the Navy wives have to go through. It seems a lot different this time because of what's going on over in Bosnia and we just don't. And then when they go over in those dangerous areas, you know, where all the conflict is going on, you just never know what's going to happen. We know that if something happens, we'll get involved. That's just our history. That when, uh, when the call is there, America will be there. Hello, I'm Bill Fricks, President and CEO of Newport News Ship Building. On behalf of all of us here at Newport News, season's greetings. For 10 years, we proudly sponsored a Navy Christmas. It's our way to say thanks to the men and women in the Navy, Marine Corps, and their families during this special time of year. You do a really great job. Whether you're aboard the fine Newport News built carrier America or deployed elsewhere, we wish you a safe return and a happy new year. God bless you all. Hello, I'm Charlie Gwaltney, Area Manager for Bell Atlantic. Bell Atlantic is proud to be a part of this year's Navy Christmas Special. Sponsoring this show is one way we can say thanks to the men and women of the United States Navy. From all of us at Bell Atlantic to you and yours, best wishes for a holiday season filled with peace and happiness. Hi, welcome to HQ at Christmas time. As you can see, we're pretty busy here this time of year, but no matter how frantic it gets during the holidays, we'd still like to take a minute to thank all of our relatives, our friends, our fellow employees, and especially all of you, our customers right here in Hampton Roads, who've been so loyal to us all these years. You know, HQ was founded right here just over 10 years ago, and we've grown beyond our wildest dreams, now operating 54 stores in 15 states, with a total of more than 10,000 employees. But no matter how large we may get, we pride ourselves on putting down roots in the communities we serve and giving something back whenever we can. So it's our privilege once again this year to sponsor WVEC's broadcast of Navy Christmas. We hope this program brings you as much pleasure as we receive from bringing it to you. Season's greetings and happy holidays from all of us at home quarters. Merry Christmas from the Adriatic Sea, where once again thousands of Hampton Roads sailors are on holiday deployment. I'm Joe Flanagan, and that is the USS Wasp on station off Bosnia, where world attention is truly focused this year on peace on Earth, goodwill toward men. This marks the 10th year of our Navy Christmas special, and this year should be truly a special show. Why I take you aboard the Wasp and the Carrier America in the Persian Gulf, Cynthia Lima has the stateside story. Happy holidays from the flight deck of the USS John C. Stennis, the Navy's newest aircraft carrier. We're here at Pier 12 of the Norfolk Naval Station, and that's the USS George Washington behind me. This is my third year with the Navy Christmas, my first year as a Navy wife. So it's an honor for me to be associated with a program that's celebrating 10 years of uniting deployed sailors and Marines with their loved ones back home. It is never easy to say goodbye, especially during the holidays. And perhaps the hardest day of all is deployment day, that day that marks the beginning of the six-month cruise. Long before
before the sun comes up on a breezy August morning, hundreds of family members and friends line the piers at the Norfolk Naval Station. Even when daylight does appear over this city at sea, the sun will remain hidden behind the clouds. There never seems to be sunshine on deployment day. It's miserable, you know, I just cry and, and just pray and ask God to give me strength. And I wish my husband wasn't going, but can't control that. Some of the little ones are too small to understand what's happening. They don't realize that Daddy isn't coming home tonight. But Daddy knows today's goodbye is for a long time. I have a three-year-old son. He's never been away from Daddy for more than a couple hours in the evening and uh, just wondering how he's going to handle not having Daddy home to jump on on Saturdays. It is never easy to say goodbye. The sailors and Marines worry about their families back home and the families worry about their loved ones at sea. It seems the more we do this, the worse it gets for me emotionally. This is, I guess this is one of the hardest things that the Navy wives have to go through. We anticipate this, and we're always afraid of it. And when it finally comes, we're just a b bundle of nerves. And um, it just never gets better. It never gets better for us. Uh, we realize that there is uh, some anticipation and uh, uh, some uh, uh, concern about where we are going in the world. But we will take great care of our sailors and Marines. That is our number one priority, the safety and welfare of our crew. In the months to follow, the America and her escort ships will steam from the Persian Gulf to the Adriatic Sea. They will answer every call to duty while counting the days to homecoming. Today, though, all anyone can think of is that deployment day always comes too soon. It doesn't get any easier. It's the first time. Or the, you can do it one time or a hundred times, but it's still hard. Some sailors try to look on the bright side. After all, this will be America's last deployment. She'll be decommissioned next summer. Six month cruise is not that long, and you see a lot, and it would be part of history. You can go back in history saying, I was on the last cruise. And as America slips from view, those she leaves behind look forward to that winter day in 1996 when America comes home once more. It's um, really sad for me, but we'll get through it. February is not too far from now. Life at sea. You can't explain it unless you've lived it. Day in, day out, month in, month out. It's all about work, and it's all about missing loved ones. The hardest part? Leaving. <laughs> Leaving's the hard part. I mean, from the moment you leave, all you think about is coming home. So, but you keep your mind on your job, you stay busy, time flies. Somebody has to be out here. So everyone else enjoy their Christmas, and you know, we'll be there next year. Some 5,000 sailors support the flight operations on board the Carrier America. From behind the scenes maintenance and supply to flight deck assignments launching and recovering aircraft. Out here, your work is your life. That's what's good about it, flying this much. We're in a routine now where we're set in that routine and um, the routine never changes so you're able to just adjust really quickly. You know, everything's so-so, you get it one right after another so it's going good real quick. On the flight deck, the yellow shirts and the green shirts and all the colored shirts work in unison. A choreographed ballet amidst a chorus of engineering and aviation feats that boggle the mind. Basically, everyone is out there looking around for safety, uh, looking out for your, your fellow shipmate. Um, all I can say is it's just been years and years probably of mistakes that have gotten us to this point where we, we know what to look for. And in the middle of all this, you make the most of the holiday season. Try and make a phone call during Christmas and just, I kind of stay involved in my work. That way I don't think about it as much. On board the Monongahela, Kathy Fairgreave tries not to think about her three daughters at home. Well, my husband is at home being the good father that he is. It's hard. This is the first time I've been away from them. It's hard on them. 
hard on me. It's real hard on me. Last year was the first year women served on board a carrier deployed for six months. Not the first time, however, women have experienced this long life at sea. Well, it's working out great for me. Um, I just got my air um, warfare pin aboard the ship, so that was a great accomplishment for me. I think women are really starting to get their jest to the Navy. Work goes on around the clock out here. When flight ops are scheduled from midnight to noon, the aviation machinists fine-tune jet engines from 10 p.m. till 10 a.m. I really enjoy it. It's, it's different. Uh, it's, it's a time away from the rest of civilization as we know it. So it, it, it takes a special kind uh, to be out here and uh, looking in the op open ocean and, uh, and seeing the amount of stars that are out here uh, when there's no light around. Gratification and a sense of fulfillment comes in a variety of ways. When it's life on board ship, it usually has everything to do with your job. Oh, the thing I like, the thing I like most about it is seeing the, the stores go off the deck in an RFI condition and knowing that uh, the airplanes that need gas are going to be able to get it. They seem to be training harder than ever out here this year with port calls canceled and flight ops at all hours. Still, these men and women find a sense of enjoyment. It's a fun job. It's, uh, you know, we keep busy up here. It's constant. Uh, it's either uh, real busy or nothing's going on. Go ahead, 2-6. Of course, we couldn't leave without giving a few a chance to pass along holiday greetings. I like to say uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Birthday to my daughter Cheyenne. She'll be nine on December 27th. Yeah, I would like to say hello to my husband Ray and my kids Aaron, Shane, and Megan. Merry Christmas. I say Merry Christmas to my wife Robin and to uh, my son Gregory and my daughter Katie. I'll be thinking about you. Merry Christmas. It's all about staying in touch. On a six-month holiday deployment, nothing is more welcome than the sight of those orange bags labeled U.S. mail. At least twice a week for smaller ships and every other day for the larger ones, mail helos deliver the goods. Everything from mom's homemade holiday cookies to Christmas cards from kids and loved ones. Today's a pretty small load. It's only about 5,000 pounds. Normal big load can be up towards of 20,000 pounds or 40,000 pounds of two helos. Mail from the States comes through Siganella, Sicily and makes it here in less than a week on average. So far in the cruise, uh, these guys right here, just for the Wasp alone, have handled about 250,000 pounds of mail. Yeah. So it's a lot of mail. Speaking of a lot of mail, this is the scene on the Carrier America. When a big load comes in, they stage it in passageways and then get it down to the ship postal office for sorting. Some sailors have to rely on the ship store to do all their Christmas shopping and then mail the packages out from here. Actually, it's easier. There's uh, not much to choose from, so you just go with what they have and uh, kind of keeping my wife uh, sane back at home. She doesn't do any Christmas shopping. I'm trying to do it all over here. And uh, it's working out so far. Sailing in the Adriatic in December, this is what Christmas comes down to for the average sailor. A package from home goes a long, long way when loved ones are a long way away. Well, we have so little to look forward to. Uh, we have a lot to look forward to out here as far as our mission, but it tends to be day in and day out uh, the same thing. Uh, the change of pace in receiving Christmas gifts from home is uh, a great additive and really boosts everybody's spirits. Staying in touch is all about keeping those cards and letters and packages coming this time of year. Let's say keep writing and send more. These guys are always willing to hump it, always willing to move as much mail as they can get. So, Merry Christmas. Thanks to technology, there are other ways to communicate in 1995. Take this ComSat card, for instance. Sailors buy the card on ship and simply dial home and punch in their calling code. It's uh, 10, or $11 for uh, 10 minutes. Popular. It's extremely popular. We get uh, sailors using them constantly all the time. There's also the USO Computergram, the email way to stay in touch. 
buy the disc for $3, type your message, and it'll wind up in the computer at the Norfolk Naval Base. And my wife receives a phone call and she can either come down and pick this, my message up, it allows you to type 3,500 characters or 100 lines. Of course, if your Chief Warrant Officer James Trosper, staying in touch with family is just a passageway away. You see, his son James is also on board the Carrier America. It's the final cruise for James Sr. and the very first cruise for James Jr. Uh, it's a lot easier. I mean, you know, being my first cruise, having my father on board, I mean, see, people, people look at it like, you know, I got a little slack to mess with, but, you know, I feel I'm pretty much under pressure because, you know, the first time I mess up, you know, he's on my back and all, but it's pretty good. You always have family on board. And uh, being new to the Navy, that's, that's the toughest job for, uh, for new guys is to learn first how to do things on board a ship. But uh, he, he came on board and he's, he's, he's in his own little world and he's doing fine. Cynthia Trosper knows her husband is used to all this and she's confident her son will adjust. Well, I miss him, I mean, you know, <laughs> and I know he's all right as long as he's with my husband out there. So whether it's the Wasp, the America, or right here on the Monongahela, whatever ship you're on, the key to staying in touch is letter writing. Bye-bye, Daddy. Bye-bye, Daddy. of the family is okay too. Mom got me some new clothes. Has anything happened to you exciting so far? Things have been pretty boring around here. Your son John. P.S. Please respond as soon as possible. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. I know that uh, it's tough being away from home at Christmas time. Uh, I've done that a few times myself. I also know it's tough for families when you're gone. And what you're doing in the Adriatic doesn't make that any easier because I know they're worried about you too. I want you to know that the entire Navy is thinking about you, not just me, but your shipmates everywhere. And I know the families that love you and care about you are thinking about you too. Somehow this all gets a little bit easier when you realize that the America and the Wasp Battle Groups are not just there on normal deployment. You're there for a special reason. The people of Bosnia, the little children who are thinking about Christmas right now, the people of Bosnia have had a terrible almost four years. They've had one bad Christmas and one bad day after another. And now you and our shipmates in the Army and in the Air Force and in the Marine Corps are giving them a chance to have a good Christmas and a better life. Your work is important. It's been needed for a long time. I'm glad you finally have the chance to do it. And I'm glad it's succeeding. At Christmas time, we always talk about peace on earth and goodwill to men. Well, you are part of a team, a joint team and a team from many nations that's trying to make peace on earth, at least the Bosnian 
piece of a, a reality. That's great work. Many would say that's God's work. I'm proud of you. To the families in Norfolk, if every one of your WASP battle group or America battle group sailors could look into this camera, they would tell you how much they love you and how much they miss you and how much they want to come home. And they will be home on time and they'll be heroes when they get there. Merry Christmas, God bless you all and stay safe. A lot has changed in the 10 years we've been doing a Navy Christmas. Five years ago, the U.S. was preparing for war in the Middle East, remember? Then in 1993, the USS America was off the coast of Somalia, and now she's back in the waters off Bosnia. The assignments may change through the years, but never the missions. There isn't another sound like it in the world. There's no mistaking the message an aircraft carrier sends, peace through strength. And it's that message that's been at the heart of every Navy deployment. More than 10,000 sailors and Marines make up the USS America Battle Group. We feel like we've got a real important mission over here. This, I think the morale's good over here. What I've seen, it's been very good uh, because we've always felt like we've had a mission, uh, either the peacekeeping role, the deliberate force action that uh, took place, and of course you see the benefits from the peace process. So that's uh, one of the things that kept us pumped up. There is a reason to keep ships at sea, even during the holidays, like the ever-troubled Middle East, and now the tenuous peace in Bosnia. Anytime the American people commit 20,000 of their young men and women to a operation, military operation, which has potential risks, you have to be able to provide overwhelming force and protection of, that, of those uh, young people. And I think the carrier battle group is specifically configured to go there rapidly. And in the Adriatic, we will probably be the closest, geographically, the closest to where our troops will be. The fate of the former Yugoslavia weighs heavily on everyone's mind here. I think the Bosnia peace agreement will again be a significant factor 
in where we steam and what we do. The introduction of Americans on the ground in the theater there will require support and that's what we are there to do. We are there to support those troops that will go on the ground. While we're not there yet, I have a, a very great feeling that that's what we will be doing. And that means putting our local Marines on alert. My take on it uh, from being out here is that the peacekeepers are going to go into Bosnia, uh, the NATO peacekeepers, and, uh, and take care of uh, that role. And I would anticipate that uh, the WASP, the Whidbey Island, and ourselves and our Embark Marines would be kept out here as a contingency so that if something happened uh, similar to what happened before with the Air Force pilot going down, we'd be ready to go in and, and uh, extricate him or any other crisis action of that nature. A lot has happened since we started visiting battle groups deployed for the holidays. The Berlin Wall is gone, the Gulf War won, and now a peace agreement in Bosnia. And through each crisis, America has been there. This, however, will be her final voyage at sea. America is our country's namesake, and her last deployment is a personal uh, challenge and a personal honor for me because America stands for greatness, it stands for excellence, it stands for what people uh, do that should be right in the world and in our country, and that's what this battle group does. So for me personally, to command her last deployment is a great honor for me. That's a feeling shared by many aboard America, especially her skipper. It's, it's a great honor, but uh, I think it's even more an honor just to be a member of this crew. This is the first aircraft carrier I ever set foot on 25 years ago. It's the first aircraft carrier I ever served on uh, right after I got my wings. America the carrier has enjoyed a rich history serving her namesake. And on this, her final deployment, her message remains the same. Peace on Earth, goodwill toward men. Michael Miller is the master at arms on board the WASP. After spending five years as a mechanic in the Army, Michael decided to go Navy. He's now been in the Navy for six years, and this marks the first time MA2 Miller has been away for the holidays. He misses his wife, Teresa, and his four-year-old daughter, Brianne. Lieutenant Jason Webb knows the feeling. Although the engineer has been through this before, it never gets any easier. And so it was that the two sailors sat down to watch a video from home. Our small attempt to bring a little holiday cheer and break the monotony of life at sea. Um, remember the Barney I got for Christmas, the big one? Um, he has the, he has the Santa hat on. Um, I put one of your shirts on him and I sleep with him. <laughs> Pictures of Rachel and Matthew and Beverly dot the room of Lieutenant Webb. Rachel was already looking forward to the homecoming. When you get off the ship, or if we go on the ship, I don't know which one, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna <laughs> run up and, and hug you. Hugging? You usually jump on him. Numbers about knocking him down. <laughs> I've been thinking about her running and jumping on me the whole time we've been gone, because I know she will. Teresa Miller and daughter Brianne had lots to say to Michael Miller. Um, you know, I'm really sorry we forgot to put the Christmas tree in your bo box. But like I said in the letter, you'll see it when you come home. You going to say hi to Daddy now? No, you going to tell him about the little Christmas tree you made for him? They sat and they listened and they watched with eyes fixed on the ones they care most about there on the little screen. Christmas, uh on December 25th is going to be the fact that I realized that it was the birth of Jesus Christ, but uh, my Christmas celebration is going to be on February 23rd. With the Navy the way it is, especially with as much under time, underway time as we've had, you see the person next to you and the person down the hall, and the next day you see that, and you think about your family but getting to see them on the tape and all actually brought them here. We love you. And we miss you. We'll be glad when the time is up and you're home again. Caught up on the
welcome a latest from home, it was time for Jason Webb to pass along his messages. Rachel, just want to tell you that you were looking, as usual, just as just as cute and as, as always. And Matthew, working hard as usual, you make sure to watch out for Rachel. And you guys have a good Christmas. Beverly. You were as beautiful as usual on the tape, even more so. And just Merry Christmas, guys. I love you all. Hi, sweetheart. How you doing? I miss you. I love you very much. Michael Miller felt like he'd visited his family at home, if only for an hour. He too passed along holiday wishes and included some special friends as well. And I'd like to uh, thank uh, Daryl and Chris Malone and uh, Dr. Ernie and Barbara Fair for uh, being there when they, uh, my family needed you. I appreciate that very much. I'd just like to wish everybody back home in the Hampton Roads area a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we'll be home soon. Well, take care, and we'll see you soon. I love you very, very much, honey. Bye-bye. Bonatelli from Brindisi, a small port city on the heel of the boot along the eastern coast of Italy. Over the years, following Norfolk-based ships has taken us to a wide variety of foreign ports of call. You've heard the phrase, join the Navy, see the world? Believe it. It's not just a job. It's an adventure. <laughs> In 1986, the Kennedy Battle Group was sailing the typical Med Cruise. Liberty meant Naples, Italy, a city visited so often by U.S. Navy personnel, it could be called the Norfolk of Europe. By the way, the singing you hear was not produced in a studio. We stumbled across a group of warehouse workers who broke into a spontaneous Italian lullaby. Not bad, eh? That first year, we were introduced to the special holiday spirit at sea. Did someone say punchy? Remember the name John Wesley? He worked on these shows in 1986 and again in 1987. And then there was Laura Taylor. She helped produce shows in 1988 and in 1989 when sailors off the Donald B. Berry visited a special orphanage in Haifa, Israel. The Berry sailors are welcome to a Sabbath dinner with a song of peace. The dinner, the music, the singing, and the dancing brought many of the sailors closer to their own children at home without dad at Christmas and made everybody feel this was no ordinary port visit. 1990 was Operation Desert Shield, the first of many visits to the Persian Gulf. Photographer John Aiken gave us his heart and soul and pictures like these for three years. Hello, welcome. The next year, the Eisenhower Battle Group was on Christmas deployment and port calls meant Manama Bahrain. Welcome to Life at Sea, a tour on liberty to lighten the load and help ease the pain of being away from home for the holidays. It's harder this year than ever in the past. In the 17 years I've been in, this is a hard one for me because my boys are at the stage where I really want to watch them. I want to see them growing. I want to see them doing well in school, the Cub Scouts, all that good stuff. Yeah. That's what I miss. It is a hard life. In ways, yeah, it is. Leaving your family, I have three sons, two, four, and six. And uh, hearing from back home, the things that they do and everything, and they ask about me, and they're upset because I'm gone and things like that. You know, it hurts. It takes its toll. And just when you really start to feel sorry for these guys, along comes some young sailor full of the spirit of the season. Well, first of all, uh, Christmas is a celebration of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, prior to one. Uh, celebrate his birthday every 25th December. Uh, family. 
gatherings, and just happiness and joy. In 1992, the Kennedy Battle Group was in the Met again. There were Liberty Tours of romantic Venice while the carrier was docked in Trieste in the northeast corner of Italy. One family in Trieste extended an invitation to dinner for some U.S. sailors. Coordinated through the USO, these open houses are a great way for deployed sailors to experience a real home away from home. France was a welcome relief for the America Battle Group in 1993, a far cry from service off Somalia in Africa. Cynthia Lima went along as sailors from the USS Shreveport spent a day visiting children at a Toulon orphanage. Port calls can be more than just an opportunity to shop and sightsee. Sometimes they become a defining moment in a sailor's life. Bonjour. Just south of Toulon, nestled in the mountains along the Riviera, is a quaint little French village. And high atop one hill sits a home filled with love. Here, Dozens of children whose parents can either no longer care for them or don't want to find someone who will. Hello. Sailors from the USS Shreveport have come to share part of their weekend with the children. Hey, you little one. They've brought boxes filled with goodie bags and hearts big enough to embrace each and every child. For these children, the gift of this holiday season isn't presents under a Christmas tree. It's memories of the day those American sailors came to visit. Grown-ups willing to play and listen and hug. Last but certainly not least was our visit to Kuwait City in 1991. The war had been over for nearly a year, but signs of the devastation were everywhere. The Mirafat family invited us into their home to express their thanks and gratitude to U.S. service men and women for liberating their city. For this family and all families, the occupation was a nightmare. Everything was spoiled and damaged here. Really, it was very, very damaged. And I went to my work, where, where, I, where I work in the, in the university. Everything was spoiled. Like, they were like rats, you know, you know how the rats they used to do? They, everything they spoil, everything they throw, everything they... The destruction was great, but the rebuilding is well underway. And the Mirafat family expresses their gratitude to those who served and to those who continue to serve. Those who sacrificed their lives for us. She's remembering them. and blessings to their families. But um, uh, thanks for every child there in uh, America, and uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I want to tell them uh, thank you because the, they free Kuwait. They free Kuwait. I am telling Happy New Year and Christmas. I'd like to thank the American people and the American Army especially and the allies and for all the, uh, for all the people who help us and I like to to say for the American soldiers who were hurt in the in the war I'd like to 
tell them to get well soon. And uh, I'd like to say all of, for all of them, Happy New Year and Merry Christmas, and thanks a lot. So you say you want a white Christmas. Almost anything is possible with a little help from your friends. Each year, the USO brings hundreds of local families together for some holiday cheer. Their loved ones are members of the America Battle Group. The USO Christmas Show allows these families to meet other people with common interests. The children sign cards for their dads, and moms get the afternoon off from having to entertain the little ones. And best of all, the Navy tapes the show and sends copies to the ships at sea. When they get a chance to see them on tape, uh, it brings back all of those wonderful feelings about uh, being home and uh, the memories of being home. And so it does lift for morale. It tells them that we're taking care of their families at home and that, uh, that we're thinking of them and that their families are thinking of them. That's a magic ingredient in our Navy. And a touch of Christmas magic is just what these families got. We're getting for Christmas. From caroling to making new friends to sending daddy an I love you. Being away from loved ones at Christmas is easier once you realize you're never really alone. Santa Claus has always had a tough time getting out to the Norfolk Bay ships each year. It's one thing to find the location of the ship, and then it's another thing to find the location of the sailors on board. In 1990, he got a gooey welcome. AW-126 rolled out the red carpet and rolled out a special banner in 1992. The E-2 squadron was thrilled to see the big man, especially when he started to pull things out of his big bag. For starters, he had this huge banner to hang, and with the speed of little Christmas elves, these VAW-126ers hitched in. Does anybody recognize these hands? The biggest gift I've ever seen, I'll tell you that. Ho, 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 ho. I got him some fake cigarettes. <laughs> I don't know he smokes, but everybody else does. <laughs> so I sent those to him. Cigarettes, I needed some of those. Been quit now for a good five years. <laughs> I want to say a Merry Christmas to my wife. In 1986, Santa bummed a ride on a mail delivery and strolled across the flight deck of the carrier Kennedy to greet the skipper, Captain Moriarty. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, and I'm telling you why, Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list and checking it twice. Gonna find out who's naughty and nice Santa Claus is coming to town He sees you when you're sleeping And he knows when you're awake He knows when you've been bad or good So be good for goodness sake oh, oh, oh. White boomers, snow white boomers Racing Santa Claus through the blazing sun Six white boomers, snow white boomers On his Australian run This year, the Diamondbacks of VF-102 are celebrating 40 years and Santa wanted to pay them a visit. We flew 22 sorties. We've got the CAG and the deputy CAG here. Another year, another ready room. What I brought were some gifts from your wives. Let's hear it for her. Yeah, let's go. These guys have been flying from midnight to noon this day. But a taste of home gave them a boost and woke them all up. Take Boog, for instance. <laughs> 1,001 ways to be romantic. i got to read it one of these days. It's the third time I've gotten the same gift. Santa was back in action one more time. I think I'm getting a hint here. Oh, I don't think it's going to fit. 
Deputy Cag Boomer was impressed. Well, hey, thanks for thanking me for Christmas. I'll certainly be thinking of you guys. I love you. Bye. Robo was impressed and surprised. And there was more for Paps. Whoever this woman is, I love her. I just can't wait to meet her. <laughs> All right, Todd Templeton. Where's Todd Templeton? Come on down, Todd. They teased Todd Templeton for his tight-fitting coveralls. <laughs> and they teased Ted Heflin for his newborn. To daddy, just hold my hand. And and <laughs> tickle my toes. I love you, Benjamin. Great. Thank you, Benjamin. This year it was CAG's turn to model. All the Diamondbacks received a pair of these, but only the CAG tried them on. Peanut M&Ms? Axel? <laughs> there were F-14s for Lieutenant Barney, pistachios for Dumpster, a magazine for Free Jack, and CDs for Slim, better known as Andy Witson. All right. 10,000 Maniacs. All right, the next one's Howdy. Come on up, Howdy. <laughs> there were photos from home for Crash, Jim Karakish, and photos from home for Soup, Dave Lauterbach. Nasty Ned got a songbook, while fighter doc, Doc Mitchell, got a Sometimes They Come Back book. Sometimes They Come Back, referring undoubtedly to my patients. <laughs> you could see it on their faces, a taste of home that absolutely made their day. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Joanne, Greg, I miss you, I love you, Dad, Dad, be home soon. All right, the little almond roca there. That's not for you, brother. that's for one. Michelle, miss you, love you lots. Uh, hugs and kisses to Zach and Morgan, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. By the end of Santa's visit, the skipper expressed an appreciation for the real gifts at home, the wives behind the scenes, the finest gift. Thank you, Libby. We love you. Uh, Julie, I miss you a lot. Uh, and to the Wives Club, the guys are doing great out here, and uh, they're all heroes. They're out here in the Persian Gulf right now, uh, flying all kind of missions. And uh, everybody, God bless you all. Merry Christmas, and thank you, Senator, for coming all the way out here to see Our us. Our pleasure. Thank you. shop all over town turn the gift shops upside down finding something for her man with everything but it's right behind her eyes and no matter what she buys she'll always She'll always be the finest gift she brings.
not in any store she can never give me more than her promise of the finest gift she brings I know her love's the finest gift she From all of us at WVEC TV 13, happy holidays to our men and women in uniform and to the families who support them. May 1996 bring you health, happiness, and more time together. God bless and good night. It's hard to believe it's been 10 years since we first started these Navy Christmas specials. 10 years of watching firsthand the sacrifices Navy families make year in and year out. Someone once said that we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. I don't know if Navy families can give any more. All of us who've worked on this people project over the last 10 years and the entire staff at WVEC-TV want you to know how much we appreciate you and what a privilege it's been to tell your story. We've laughed and we've cried and we've been inspired by your all-American efforts and convictions. You've taught us that eternal vigilance really is the price of liberty. And for that, we are eternally grateful. From all of us, thank you, God bless, and Merry Christmas.
from for those, those of us who build the ships to those of you who sail them. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. God bless you from Newport News Shipbuilding. Seasons greetings to the finest Navy and Marine Corps in the world from Newport News Shipbuilding. Happy holidays from the machine shop at Newport News Shipbuilding. Hello, I'm Charlie Gwaltney, area manager for Bell Atlantic. Bell Atlantic is proud to be a part of this year's Navy Christmas Special. Sponsoring this show is one way we can say thank you to the men and women of the United States Navy. From all of us at Bell Atlantic to you and yours, best wishes for a holiday season filled with peace and happiness. Hi, welcome to HQ at Christmas time. As you can see, we're pretty busy here this time of year. But no matter how frantic it gets during the holidays, we'd still like to take a minute to thank all of our relatives, our friends, our fellow employees, and especially all of you, our customers, right here in Hampton Roads, who've been so loyal to us all these years. You know, HQ was founded right here just over 10 years ago, and we've grown beyond our wildest dreams, now operating 54 stores in 15 states, with a total of more than 10,000 employees. But no matter how large we may get, we pride ourselves on putting down roots in the communities we serve and giving something back whenever we can. So it's been our privilege once again this year to sponsor WVEC's broadcast of Navy Christmas. We hope this program has brought you as much pleasure as we've received by bringing it to you. Season's greetings and happy holidays from all of us at Home Quarters.